so <clears throat> the law of sines, so a fairly basic formula. It's um, it's a little different from formulas that you might have seen before because it's got a double equality, but it's not it's not terrible. So sine of a over a is equal to the sine of b over b is equal to the sine of c over c. The uh, capital, or at least my attempt at making a capital, represents an angle. And the lowercase version of that represents the side opposite that angle. All right. So we'll work with that. Um, generally, we're going to be given certain facts about a triangle, and we'll need to determine all, well, maybe all of the remaining ingredients of the triangle, all the missing sides and angles or maybe just one of them, and you strategically choose the appropriate method. But um, generally, generally, when we're dealing with the law of signs, we're not working with all three components at the same time. We're working with maybe the first two or the last two or the first one and the last one, all right? Strategically deciding which one makes the most sense in a given situation, which we'll talk about a little bit more. In a few minutes um area of a triangle there's three versions of that uh the area we call the area k right uh why k it really could have been anything but since we're using a b and c to represent represent the uh, sides of a triangle and the angles of a triangle using a for area would be confusing so what i'm talking about here is you have a triangle and in that triangle, you have angles. This would be angle A, angle B, angle C, perhaps. I mean, it could be arranged differently, but you know, that's the gist of it. Across from angle A would be side A. Across from angle B would be side B. And across from angle C would be side C. Right. So we've already used A as a capital and as a lowercase. So to use it again for area would would throw a wrench in, in things. So we'll say K is equal to one half AB times the sine of C or one half AC sine of B or one half BC sine A. All right, all depending on what information you have. Now, if you, if you kind of map this to the triangle that I just drew, so focusing on the A and the B, that would be this side and this side. The angle, the relevant angle, would be the one that's included between the two sides, right? So it's kind of like, it, well, you think about it as the vertex between the two sides, right? The point of intersection, right? So you really don't need to know a formula, uh, you know, or, or I'm sorry, all three variations of the formula, as long as you have that key fundamental idea. All right, these are the sides. And this would be the angle created by the intersection of the two sides. And that would hold even if I was talking about side A and side C. The angle that's created by the intersection of side a, uh, side a and side C would be angle B. All right. So <clears throat> tackle a problem here. We have triangle DEF. So immediately I throw a wrench in the whole thing. I, I, I never know why I call it DEF to start. The first example should be triangle ABC. Uh, you know what? I'm going to make that change. It should be A, B, C, where A is 29, B is 112, and side A is 22. All right, so again, solve 
triangle ABC. You know, it might not seem like it matters, but this will more closely align with the, the formulas that I just wrote out. So it'll be a little bit more comfortable than trying to match an A with a D and so on. So at least to get started, that I recommend making those changes. And okay, so I'm gonna draw a triangle. You don't always have to draw a triangle. And it, you might say you rarely need to draw a triangle, but you should at least know how to do it in the event where you're like, I just can't visualize this. And okay, so triangle A, B, C. I always start on the lower left and then cycle around in a uh, counterclockwise fashion until I populate with all the um, the uh, angles. And then, you know, of course, the corresponding sides. All right, so that would be A over here, B over here, and C over there. All right, now they're telling us that side, a, uh, I'm sorry, angle A is 29 degrees. Angle B is 112 degrees. They don't tell us angle C, but we could figure that out. And they tell us that side A is 22. All right. Now from this, again, I can determine the third angle if I know the first two. There's 180 degrees in a triangle. So the angles of a triangle must add to 180 degrees. All right. So I could figure out that third angle by saying 180 minus 29 minus the 112. So that would be an angle of 39 degrees. I just got to figure out the other two angles. So for part A, <clears throat> I'm going to use a version of the law of sines that incorporates the one angle that I already know. All right. So that would be this. I'm sorry, the one. Apologies, the one side I already know. I know all the angles now. All right, so I need a variation of the law of sines that involves the sine of A over A. I'm going to let that be equal to the sine of B over B. Because I need to ultimately figure out sides B and side C, side B and side C. So I need a ratio that involves side B, but I also need a ratio that involves side C. All right, so I'm gonna set up two law of sines formulas. All right, so sine of 29 degrees, now I'm talking degrees, so you want to make sure your calculator is in degree mode, All right? So home, go on down to settings and make sure angle measure is in degrees. I had mine in degrees, but I figured I'd walk you through it anyway. All right, so sine of 29 degrees over the measure at 20 uh, at at side A, which is 22 whatevers. We don't know if it's centimeters or whatever. It, We'll leave it unitless for now, or at least for this problem. Angle B, I know, so I'd say sine of 112. I don't know side B. I leave that as a variable. So then for my second equation, I'm going to say sine of 29 degrees over 22 is equal to the sine of 39 degrees over side C. All right, so I solve these two equations and I have my missing sides. All right, it doesn't, doesn't matter which one I do first as long as I do them both. All right, so we do a little, little cross multiplying, but my recommendation is to make use of the fact that in a proportion, Diagonals are groupable and interchangeable. 
So what I can actually do, and I'll, I'll do a copy of it real quick so I could show you, you know, kind of like, you know, the, the low budget animation. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and swap it with this. So now B is close to being all by itself, which is great. All right. So I, I mentioned that the diagonals are interchangeable and also groupable, which means I can take this 22 and bringing bring it up to be part of the sign of 112 degrees. All right. And then I'd have be all alone. Now the thing about this that you can you could do it the way I just did it and, and it'll work out. But it's a little bit nicer if you have the 22 in front. Because then you're not going to accidentally multiply it by the, the 112 here, all right? So I would do 22 times the sine of 112 over the 29, uh, the sine of 29, I should say. All right, so that that's, you know, not the cleanest animation, but gets the job done. And, and if you could visualize that, you're you're really far ahead of the game, which is good. Professor, right. so why why it only multiplies the sine one the sine and the one twelve and not the the sine twenty nine degrees? Because we're we're only working across diagonals, so okay. this can be multiplied by this using cross multiplication, and this oh. could be multiplied by that using cross multiplication. But you can't. It's not like getting a common denominator or anything like that. Mm. It's just you group or or swap your diagonals. Okay, right. so it's not the whole thing, just the numerator. numerator. Just, just the diagonal opposite, yeah. So it turns out it's the numerator in this case. So this one would be 22 times the sine of 39 over the sine of 29 degrees. All right. And it's nicer to do it this way than to get it into decimal form because you don't have to worry about rounding as much. I mean, you'll have to round in the final answer, but that, you know, that's expected. It's when you you start having a round every step of the way. Like if I did sine of 29 right now, I get this, I'd have to round it in order to multiply it by 20 or, or divide it into 22 times the sine of 112. It's not, we're going to lose accuracy. It's not the most efficient way to do it. Right, so we're going to do 22 times the sine of 112 divided by the sine of 29. And we get about 42.1. So B is about 42.1. Now we do the same thing again. Now, you may have noticed that when I typed in the sine of 112 degrees, it changed it to the sine of 68 degrees. Uh, it just, NumWorks knows to find reference angles and represent it that way. So don't, don't be alarmed by that. What you typed in is equivalent to what they wrote right below it and equivalent to the decimal value. All right, so do it again. But this time, instead of a 112 up top, we want a 39, oops, 30 pi, no, not a three pi, 39. 22 sine 39 over sine of 29. So we should be getting C is about equal to 28.6. All right, and so those are the missing sides of the triangle. So if I wanted to redraw the triangle, We'd have A, B, and C. I'd have 29, 112, 39. I got 22 here. I have 42.1 here and 28.6 here. 
All right, and this would be my B value. This is my A value. And this is my, my C value, my lowercase c value. And so I have all the information, everything relevant to the triangle except for the area. I don't know the area, but that's what they're asking me in part B anyway. All right, so since I have the measures of all sides and angles, I could use any variation of the area formula that I want, and it'll give me something close to the measures taken uh, by determining the area using the other formulas. Okay, so it, you might be off by a decimal, like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, but uh, but it'll be right there. All right, but we allow for you to use whatever formula you want and get those different answers and still get full credit. So I wouldn't be worried about that. So I'm going to use K is equal to one half AB sine of C. All right, so I have my A value. My lowercase A was 22. My B value, 42.1. And the C value, 39 degrees. So one half, 22, 42.1, sine of 39 degrees. Pop it in, you get about 291.4. They said nearest tenth. So 291.4. All right. If I had done one half, I'll show you. I'll do it on paper too. So I could have done one half AC, sign of C, AC sine B. I'll just jump right to it. So one half. 22, 28.6, sine of, oh, uh, yeah, no, I did close parentheses, sine of uh, B, which is 112 degrees, sine of 112 degrees, you see you get 291.7. I could have also done one half BC sine A. So one half, the B value 42.1, the C value 28.6, sine of A, which is 29 degrees, sine 29. Lock it in, you get 291.9. All right, so slight variations based off of which formula that you uh, select. And that has to do with the fact that I'm putting in rounded numbers here. I'm putting in a rounded 42.1, a rounded, uh, for the, the second one, it was 28.6. And then for the last one, I had the most instances of rounded values. I had both the B and the C in there, All right? So if I had used the more precise values, Basically, the, the unrounded version of, of these, I would have gotten equality among my three formulas, but we don't worry about that kind of thing. At least not in this uh, context. Most of the time, you're going to find missing sides, of uh, missing angles, but in particular. So it wouldn't say find all missing sides and angles. You would just find like, find side B, find angle C, you know, things like that. So you just be mindful that, you know, like these problems, they, they take a little while, but they're not designed to be, um, well, I would say emblematic of what would be on the test. The test, I'm, 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 I'm not going to ask you to find all the missing stuff. I'm just going to ask you to find something in particular, but we'll work to our, towards examples like that. All right, but for now, we're going to find them all. That was my little preamble. Like, you won't always have to do it, but for now, we are. So buckle up. So I, like I said before, I like to draw a picture. A, B, C. I got 42 degrees here. I got a 22 over here. 12 degrees over here. 
this is essentially what we just did, you know, just with different numbers. So a little familiarity there, right? We'd find the missing angle because we can 180 minus 42 minus 12. And it's going to be an obtuse angle. So my quality of my diagram isn't really that good because this does not look like 126 degree angle, but we're just using this to get kind of references as to where the, uh, the appropriate sides and angles would be. All right, so I'm looking for side C, uh, side B here, side C here. All right, so I know everything that I would need to know to put into the sine ratio, the ratio of sine to its side. So 42, sine 42 over 22 is equal to, I, I got to do both. So for me, I know it's annoying when I do this, but I'll do it anyway. All right. So I'm going to set the first one equal to the sine of B over B. And the second one, I'm going to set equal to the sine of C over C. All right. So we're looking at sine of B. All right. That's my B value. My B angle, I should say, over B. And then the other one would be sine of C, which we don't know over over c which we don't know all right so second one we really can't do anything with just yet oh i'm sorry angle c we do know second one we could do uh, first one we could do it doesn't make a difference i was just having a moment there i was like wait we don't know other parts of that but we actually do all right so this becomes and you know this is not the kind of thing that you have to show me on paper but you should know that this becomes B equals 22 times the sine of 12 over the sine of 42. And the other one is C equals 22 times the sine of 126 over sine of 42. All right, those are our two relevant ratios. Now, they didn't ask us to find the area, so that extra ingredient is not required. Once we run these two calculations, we'll have what we need. All right, so that's going to be 22, parentheses, 22 times sine of 12, divided by the sine of 42. So about 6.8. They didn't give rounding instructions, but I'm going to assume it's still to the nearest tenth. And then run it again, but this time with a 126 in my numerator, everything else remains the same. So about 26.6. All right, so what this is telling me I mean, not that not that they really asked, but I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, so side A and side C should be in the same neighborhood, you know, size wise. But side B should be really small, right? So we're probably looking at something, you know, if we have two really long sides. So these, we got one really long side here another really long side here, all right? In order for them to have, I guess I could say, um, got, gotten closer together, I don't know how else to phrase it. It would have to be something more like this. Which would create kind of a wider angle here. Uh, overshot a little bit so this angle here should be much bigger than these other two all right so this one is like this is like your 12 degree angle here the middle of the road one 42 degrees over here and then you'd have your 126 over here and so that's what the triangle really should have looked like but they didn't ask us for that so i'm not going to lose any sleep over it right. and uh for for the record i'm not going to ask you to draw a scale representation of the triangle it just, it's nice to know these things.
Okay. Uh, and besides, I didn't throw any measurements on this. So for all I know, this might not, not even be that great. All right. But it's definitely not going to look like this is really what I'm getting at. Uh, let me, let, well, I, can, I guess I can leave it here. I keep going for my lasso and I keep leaving it on a marker. So let's say more like this. All right, so for the next one, we have side B angles A and C, all right? So we have, again, two of the three angles. One of them's obtuse. I mean, I suppose I could draw it more obtuse. I could draw it like this and call it ABC. It really doesn't matter, again, because we're just looking at it for positioning. But I already started doing it, so why not? 132 degrees, 33 degrees. So 180 minus the 132 and the 33 that we already know leaves us 15 degrees. So even this is kind of like an like an overscaling. It really should be something more like you have this one, the base angle, and something really tiny. Uh, well, I guess I can't go that tiny. So something like this, and then connected. All right, more like that. So this angle looks like it might be around 15 degrees. The problem is this one looks like it's the same. So it's not precisely accurate. But the whole idea, again, is to have a general sense. All right, so I know... Side B is 50. So the ratio that I know the most about is related to angle B and its corresponding side. So when I set up my trig ratios, my law of sine ratios, I want to have the sine of B over B being my starting point. All right. So that's going to give me sine of 15 degrees over 50. And then I would set that equal to the other two. All right, the other two possibilities. So kind of like looking at it as a, um, a tree diagram, you're saying that I could set it equal to either the sine of A over A or the sine of B over B, like a decision tree. Uh, I'm sorry, C over C. All right, so I'll do the A first, then the C. So sine of 132 degrees over side A, which would be right here. And then I really don't have room over there, so I'm just going to write it below. Sine of 15 degrees over 50 would be equal to the sine of 33 degrees over the corresponding side C, which would be right here, all right? Now you get to a point, you do this enough, you, you start to visualize and say, okay, I know how this is gonna go in the calculator. But until you get there, you might wanna write out the intermediate steps, right? So we're gonna swap the A, and I'll, I'll do it like I did before. I'll copy it and then just kind of move the pieces into the appropriate places. So I'm gonna take, my equal sign and my fraction bars. The A is gonna swap with the sine of 15. So the A would go here, the sine of 15 would go here, all right? I then wanna group, I wanna take this 50 and bring it up with this. So I'm gonna group these two together and make that the numerator of my other fraction. So I guess I didn't need that second fraction bar. I'm going to make use of it, though. All right. So being able to see that in your mind, it really gives you an advantage. Otherwise, you just write it out. All right. So the second one would be C equals. We're going to have the fifth uh, five zero fifty sine of 33 degrees over the sine of 15 degrees.
in moments like these, I find that students have one of two reactions. One is, dang it, I should have practiced my algebra more, just using more colorful language. And the other is, oh, thank God I practiced my algebra back then, you know, because now this this makes perfect sense, you know. That, uh, as you could probably imagine, issues of people in the past, you know, kind of faking their way through entire courses, specifically algebra, and then the reckoning happens when they get to pre-calculus, calculus, you know, the more advanced stuff where you need to know the algebra. It's like, ah, I should not have cheated my way through those courses. And so uh, if you're uh, if you're a little deficient in your algebra, that's, I suppose, not the worst thing, but it, it'll, at this particular moment, because think about the um, amount of algebra we did in this class, we did, we did a lot early on, but not so much since, right? So kind of make your way through this class, but I promise you when you get to calculus, it's, that's going to change. Right, so brush up on those skills if you're if you find that you're a little bit behind in that area. And the good thing about algebra is that it is something that can be practiced to perfection. Like you can practice it enough that you get good at it. It starts off by, you know, like this idea of. Well, if I just see the same kind of problem over and over again, I know what to do. So that's where you start. And then after that, it's like, oh, I actually get why this works the way it does. And that comes through practice. Right. So add that to um, studying the unit circle and um, that those formulas that we use for trig identities in the last unit. Those three three things absolute essential for calculus all right absolutely i guess essential 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 is the first word of the day essential as in algebra is essential for success in calculus as in the unit circle is essential for success in calculus and finally the trig identity list is essential for success in calculus. Essential, the first word of the day. All right, now number three only gives us the um, the sides, all right? And the, when, when you're given uh, only the sides, you don't know anything about the angles, that could uh, that could be a problem. So let me just show you real quick. So I got my, I'm still going to label the angles A, B, and C. The sides are 12, 15, and 19. All right. So if I try to set up my law of signs, I'm like, okay, which one do I have complete knowledge about? Well, not really any of them. So let's say I do it from the perspective of the sine of A, sine of A over A. All right, we could set that equal to the sine of B over B, or we could set it equal to the sine of C over C. Want to put that little equal sign in there. All right. So, you know, just you go for it and you see what happens. All right. <laughs> so I could say sine of A, which I don't know. So I'll leave it as an A over 12 is equal to the sine. I don't know B. That's going to be over 15. All right. I could also do the sine of A over 12 is equal to the sine of C over 19, all right? But I, I only made the decision to start with the sine of A over A. Maybe it's these two that are equal. So I could also say the sine of B 
over 15 is equal to the sine of C over 19. All right. So in order for this to work, and, and I'll preface this by saying there's another way to do it that's much easier, but I wanted to show you this way because um, the, well, it's useful in demonstrating algebra skills. It also gives you an alternative approach to solving these kind of problems uh, as opposed to what I'm going to show you in a few minutes. And also, I think the solution is kind of cool. So I uh, I tend to do it this way sometimes just for the heck of it. All right. I'm going to, this is not the final resting place for these equations. I'm just putting them there so I can clearly demonstrate what I'm doing with each one. All right. So I'm going to solve the first one for the sine of A. All right. I'll highlight the thing I'm solving it for. So sine of A. All I'm going to do is shove this 12 up into the numerator on the other side. Actually, I can just leave that like that. So 12 sine B over 15. All right. I could do the same thing with the second one. Solve it for the sine of A. So that would be sine of A is equal to 12 sine of C over 19. Now, this essentially is, is probably one of the more complicated looking systems of equations that you've ever seen. But I have two equations, both equal to the same value. So the right sides of these equations could be set equal to each other. So that's what I'm going to do. One sec. So I'm going to say 12 sine B. over 15 is equal to 12 sine C over 19. Now we have a common factor on both sides of the equation, so I can cancel those out if I want. Or I can just kind of leave this alone until I see what's going on with the third equation. All right? That third equation leads me to believe, I guess, that if I make a substitution from one of these, this equation into this one or vice versa, I should be able to eliminate another variable, All right? So while I could have made, you know, simplified this, this one here immediately, I, I kind of want to hold off on that and solve my third equation for one of the two trig functions. And it doesn't matter which one you do. So I'll solve it for the, I'll say the sine of sine of B. So sine of B is going to be equal to 15 sine C over 19. So I can replace in this equation sine of B with this expression. So sine of B here is equivalent to all of this. So I could put these two equations together to create a new one. 12 times that 15 sine C over 19. All over 15 would be equal to 12 sine C over 19. All right, but there's there's no way to proceed without doing some algebra. So we just kind of sort of live with it, I guess. Um, but it, it does shockingly clean up fairly nicely. Just you got to get, get over that first couple of humps. All right, this 15 could be thought of as 15 over one. So I could do a keep change flip. 
right? So that would become, and if I multiply this, this 12 through, becomes 12 times 15 sine of C over 15 times 19. All right. And then it's at this point where, I mean, if you if you see it, you recognize that the left side is equal to the right side. You have the 15s to cancel out. And you'll end up with 12 sine C over 19 is equal to itself, which really got us nowhere. All right. And the reason I, I know it's kind of frustrating to to take an approach that that you know is not going to work and have to do it as part of a lecture. But my my point behind this is, well, you can't just, because I'm about to teach you something, something called the law of cosines. And in the past, what has happened is people have kind of come out of this thinking that they have a choice. That, oh, I, I just like the law of sines better. I'll just use that. But you don't have a choice. You have to do it the way that the problem dict dictates that you do it. All right. So the first two problems, they, they gave you a side. I'm sorry. They gave you an, at least one angle. All right. So for the law of signs, we need at least one angle. All right. This one does not have at least one angle given, so we'd have to use the law of cosines. And so this is what would happen. I mean, you might have stopped enjoying this problem once I made these three equations here, but you definitely really don't enjoy it when you when you do all this work and you get nowhere, right? And that's what people have done in the past. They've gotten nowhere, and it's been kind of heartbreaking because they are mistakenly under the impression that they have a choice in the matter that I, oh you know i i like the law of science better i'll just use that i'm like that that's not how it works right in the case it's kind of like um if you think about the quadratic formula well i i like factoring i'll just do it that way all the time well what about the times when you can't factor what do you do oh i just i won't worry about those well they're going to be on the test so you got to be able to deal with it right and so that's what's uh, that's what the kind of motivation was behind me doing this, right? Uh, not to be not to be mean, but to kind of I don't know make a point, I guess, right? So you see in number four, so we uh, and I'll just put a star on this and say we need another method. And I know some of you would, would have just believed me if I said it, but I, I needed to show you, all right? And it's like, oh, no, you can't do this this way. And most people are like, oh, okay, cool, thanks. Uh, show us the other way and we're good. But then there's there's that segment of the population is like, well, why can't we do it this way? And because I said so, it's not always an acceptable answer, all right? So this one here, I'm going to do my labeling. A, B, C. I'm going to bring it in. I'll bring it out if uh, people are still looking at that other one in a second. But I wanted to make a note here of the sides and the angles. Now, this one has at least one angle. So we can technically do it with the law of sines. All right. But you're going to kind of run into another, another one of those issues where you're going to have to do some algebra. All right. And so for this one, you actually, you know, you would get a solution. But it's it's not going to be pretty. So I'll do the setup for this and then I'll just kind of cut to the chase. So I want to incorporate the given the given angle here. So I want to start off with sine of C over C. But I don't know. C side C. So I'm going to say sine of 50 over C. And then again, I could branch out to the sine of B over B or the sine of A over A. 
right? So sine of B, unknown B over lowercase b, and then sine of 50 over C would be equal to sine of A. Sorry, I meant to put the actual B in there. Uh, 15. Sine of A over 13. All right. And then if you want, like I said before, you can do the sine of A over 13 is equal to the sine of B over 15. All right. So this would be the setup. And so rather than taking you through what I just did here, this mess, the glorious mess, uh, I'm just going to tell you that you want to use the other method. So we need another method. So this is another instance where, yes, we could technically do it. And, and, and believe me, it, it's, and this is one thing I'm going to ask you to believe me on, is that in this instance, we wouldn't have gotten a solution. In this one, we will eventually get a solution. We would just have to do all of this work again. And like I mentioned before, the, the solution is kind of cool because you're incorporating uh, algebra skills into the, the whole the whole uh, recipe here, All right? So if you if you progress through this by getting C alone here, C alone there, and setting them equal, just like we did over here, and the, um, you know, setting the two expressions equal, and then use the other one to make a substitution, you'll eventually get the solution. It's just, again, is it a adequate use of time, I guess? All right. So what we're looking at here is very specific instance. So like I said before, you can technically use the law of signs if you have at least one angle, all right? But it's the arrangement of the sides and angles that dictate what method is the most appropriate. So this is the one we call SSS. This one would be SAS, all right? And the reason why we, well, if we know S stands for sides, then number three becomes obvious. There's three sides given, all right? For number four, it's an S, then an A, then an S. If you progress around the, the triangle, starting here and work your way around, you can't get to the other angle without passing through, a, uh, I'm sorry, you can't get through, uh, get to the other side without passing through the given angle, all right? So if you're if you're actually imagine yourself as a character traveling around this triangle, if you're following this path, you're on the path with length uh, length of fifteen. In order to get to the side with the length of thirteen, I'd have to then pass through th this angle of fifty degrees. All right, and so some people will say, okay, well, if I'm here and I want to get to this location, oop. That ran on me. Couldn't I go this way? Well, what we want is uh, along the lines of reference angles, we want the shortest possible path. All right. So if you're following the shortest path from one place to another, where would it take you? Well, you'll, you'll start off with a side, then you'll pass through an angle and you'll get to another side. So that makes it SAS. All right. With these, now it's kind of hard, like the diagram's already kind of diagrammed out, but we had an angle, another side, and another angle over here, All right? So this would be, if you're following the progression going around, the shortest distance to get from the beginning to the end, you probably go this way, All right? And so that would be an angle, an angle, and a side. If it has that arrangement, law of signs works pretty efficiently, all right? And then for number two, we were given this angle to start, this angle, and the side in between the two. So if we're going shortest distance from beginning to end, we're going this way, we have an angle followed by a side followed by an angle, all right? So by recognizing the arrangement of sides and angles, 
before you get started, you can avoid going down a path like this, all right? When you have SSS or SAS, you want to be going with the law of cosines, which we'll talk about in a minute. But the other ones, AAS, ASA, you would use the law of sines. Or you can forget everything I just said, try the law of sines, and if it doesn't work, you find yourself with not, a, not enough information, then you try the law of cosines, all right? So um, number five, if you if you diagram it out, so quick A B C. Here's A, here's B, here's C. I have the 25 degrees, 125. That's a capital. This is supposed to have been uh, uh, having a degree symbol. So apologies for that. Here's my 150. This should be 125 to get from one end to the other. So I'm starting here and I wanna go here or vice versa. I have an angle and I have to pass through a side and arrive at another angle, all right? So that, that's not one of the ones I mentioned above, but that's an, that's, oh, actually it is. Oh, look at that. So it, it would work with the law of science, all right? Now, that's not what it's asking us for here. It says find the area, right? So for the area, I can do one half A, B, sine C. I could do one half B, C, sine A. In no particular order, one half A, C, sine B. All right. In each case, I need two sides, all right? So I have to solve for that first. But I know I can solve for it with the law of signs now because I recognize that it's an ASA situation. So I know the most about the B ratio, all right? I mean, indirectly, 180 minus 125 minus another 25. That means that at B, we have a 30 degree angle. So I know the most about the B ratio. So I would say sine of B over B is equal to, and it really doesn't matter because what I can do is I could use one of the formulas because I know side B, I could use one of the formulas that has a B in it. Either of these formulas have a B in it. So I can choose to solve for sine uh, for side A, which would put me in this formula, or I could choose to so uh, solve for side C, which would put me in this formula. I'm going to choose A. So I'm going to say is equal to the sine of A over A. So sine of 150. Oh, sorry, got it backwards. Sine of 30 degrees over 150 is equal to the sine of 25 degrees over unknown. All right, doing some diagonal swapping, I get A is equal to 150 times the sine of 25 over the sine of 30. All right, so I'll do that, make that computation, 150 times the sine of 25, oops, sine of 25 divided by the sine of 30. All right, so I'm looking at about 126.8. All right, so I know A now. I have the measure of angle of, sorry, side A. That would put me in this formula. So I'm going to ditch these two and go with this one and say K is equal to one half times 126.8 times 150 times the sine of 125, which is the angle at C. 
And then I'll get my area formula as an approximation, one half times 126.8 times 150 times the sine of 125. So we're looking at about 7790.1. All right, they didn't give us units, so I'm not, again, I'm not worried about that too much. All right, so this would be my final answer. If, if they gave me the units, I would make sure to include them, but, um, but yeah, like I said, not worried about that. All right, so that's the law of signs. Uh, and, and again, I, I, we're taking a lot on faith here. I, you're believing me that the law of signs only works in certain circumstances. Hopefully my little demonstration helps with that. Uh, I never really showed you where the law of signs came from. So I, I have that on the agenda for next class. Uh, same idea with the law of cosines. For now, I'm just showing you the rules and then we'll see uh, how and why they work. All right. But on the next page, we have the law of cosines. And I mentioned before that some people are like, oh, I like the law of sines better than the law of cosines. I'll just use that. And I say there's really no choice. Uh, when you see the formulas, you start thinking, oh, I really wish I had a choice because law of cosines is uh, not as pretty as law of sines. So we have. So, Professor, I have a yeah. question. So number three and four don't have an answer. They don't have an answer using the law of signs. We have to come back to it and use the law of cosines to figure them out. Okay, there. All right, so A squared is equal to B squared plus C squared. They're like, oh, this isn't that bad. It's the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, minus 2BC cosine of A. That extra ingredient is what people don't really like about this. Uh, B squared is equal to a squared plus c squared minus 2ac cosine b. That's the second variation. The last variation is c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. All right, all correct, depending on what sides and angles you're given and under what circumstances you're given those sides and angles, right? Because if it's an, an ASA situation, like the last problem we did, that you can do with law of sines very easily, not so much with the law of cosines. But let me take you through a couple of uh, basic examples. Suppose the triangle ABC, so I'll draw it. Let me just make sure. I'll make a little note here, 15. Number two here was supposed to be the payoff for that problem we couldn't solve before. So I got to ch change some numbers, but we'll come to that in a minute. So ABC. Fifty four degrees. Oh, so four. Seven. And fifty four degrees. All right, so this is an SAS situation because uh, if I start here and I want to go here, that's a side, another side, I have to pass through an angle, SAS. All right, so I can use the law of cosines, just a question of which one I want to use. All right, use the one so I'll say use the version that corresponds to the given angle. At a moment there, I was like, how do I want to word this? Uh, so we know angle C. So use the one that's solved for C, right? And that's because in that version, it calls for the cosine of angle C. So I would have to know angle C in order to use this version of the formula. All right, so C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. I don't know lowercase c. 
I do know lowercase a is four, lowercase b is seven. So two times four times seven times the cosine of 54 degrees. All right, so this is calculator ready. I recommend taking the next step as a mental step, take the square root of both sides. C would be equal to the square root of everything I just wrote. So let me do that a different way because that didn't look very nice. So we're going to take the square root of everything on the right-hand side. All right, and that's because of the presence of the power of two here, right here. All right, we're undoing the power of two. How do we do that? We take the square root. All right, so square root four squared plus seven squared minus two times four times seven times the cosine of 54 degrees. And we know, we now know that C is approximately equal to 5.7. All right, just one equation. No, like the ambiguity of it is really just kind of, I'll say false, like, cause it's, it feels like it's ambiguous as to which formula you use, but there is a, there is a, a reason or a rationale or reason for why we select the one when we do, right? In two places, this formula made the most sense. One, because it's solved for side C, which is what we happen to be looking for. But more importantly, it incorporates angle C, which is the only angle we know. All right. Now for number two, they don't tell us any angles. So I, I wanted to change this like I did before. Instead of X, Y, Z, I want it to be A, B, C. So this will be A is equal to 12. B is equal to 15 and C is equal to 19. And I'm changing it to the numbers on the previous page because I meant to have this question be the payoff to the one that we went down the rabbit hole and it didn't work out. So this was supposed to be the moment where it's like, oh, see how much easier this is? But um, I can't make a sheet without making a typo on it. So here we are. All right. So they're asking us, what is the measure of the angle across from the side of measure 19 should be 19 all right so up above i said use the version that corresponds to the given angle a little addendum to that the one you know or the one you're looking for All right, so the one you know or the one you look you're, you're looking for. Looking, looking is the second word of the day, as in the angle that I'm looking for or the droid I'm looking for, as in these are not the droids you're looking for. Looking is the second word of the day. All right, so as it turns out, I'm going to use the C version of the formula again. C squared is equal to A squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. So I know c is 19, so 19 squared. I know a is 12, so 12 squared. b is 15, so 15 squared. So minus 2 times 12 times 15 times the cosine of c, which happens to be the thing I'm looking for. Anytime you write an equation, where there's only one variable, you know you can get a solution if it exists. It just might be challenging to do, but it's possible. And that, that's all we're looking for here is possible. So I'm gonna clean this up as much as I can. 19 squared, 361. All right. Um, order of operations tells me that I have to multiply these together separately from the sum of uh, the 12 squared and the 15 squared. So we have 144 plus 225 minus 
uh, 24 times 15. So minus 360 cosine C. All right, so I can combine these two together. 144, 144 plus 225 gives me 369. So I have 361 on the left, 369 minus 360 cosine C. I'm going to tell you the most common error that usually happens. And I'm going to write it. Don't do this. Don't write 361 is equal to nine cosine C. All right, don't do that. These two cannot be combined because the variable C is attached to one of them, but not the other. So they're not like terms. All right, so I'm going to do a uh, red oval here and strike through. The old Ghostbuster symbol, except not even close. All right, so what instead we'll do is subtract the three six. Oh, whoa, hello. That got thick. Subtract the 369 for both sides. So 361 minus 369, negative 8, is equal to negative 360 cosine C. Divide out the negative 360. Cancel. You're going to have cosine of C is equal to 8 over 360. So I'm going to leave that as 1 over 45. I don't want to have to write the decimal. Even though it's repeating, I try to stay away from decimals until the last step of any portion of a problem. Now I want C alone, so I'm going to do the arc cosine of 140, 145th. You could also have left it as 8 over 360. You could also leave it as negative 8 over negative 360. It, it really doesn't matter. I just wanted to write less characters here, so using 1 over 45. All right, so we're going to do shift cosine. Type in 1 over 45. Man, this is not registering. Okay. And we get about 88.7. 88.7 degrees. All right. So that's the method that we would use in lieu of the law of signs. All right. And, and in both cases, you're better off with the law of cosines. In number two, you have to use the law of cosines. In number one, you're you're better off. Your your preference should be to use the law of cosines. All right. So again, the moral of the story here is you come out of this lesson being like, well, I don't I don't really like this law of cosines, so I'm not going to use it. I like law of signs better. My answer to that is. You don't have a choice. Sometimes you have to use a method. You have to use one method over the other, right? Not because the teacher told you to, not because, oh, you'll learn more if you do it this way, but because it's impossible to do it the other way, right? So that's my moral of the story there. Uh, professor, so you only use cosine when there's no angles, right? Um, you must use law of cosines when there's no angles. All right. But you can you, use you, cosines otherwise as well? You can. It's just not as efficient all right, as the law of sines in some instances. The cases where we want to use the law of cosines would be SAS. So make a note of that. Use for SAS 
for SSS. And it's basically like if you have at least two sides, so two sides are more given, you're probably going to want to use the law of cosines. If you have two or more angles given, you're probably going to want to use the law of sines. All right. But what I said before still holds. Set it up like set it up using the method that you think is the appropriate method to use. And if you end up with more than one variable in your equation, you're probably not going about it the right way. Like here, when I did all this and I saw that in each equation, I had both a sign A and a sign B, right? So variable A, variable B, variable A, variable C, and so on. My best case scenario was that I would use a system of equations to solve it. In some cases, it'll work. I showed you the one case where it wouldn't, right? So if you set up an equation and you see more than one variable in there, like you see an A and a B, then you, you should be thinking, I better, I better try using the other method. Right? That, that's the best advice I can give you. It's kind of like looking for the formula that fits all of the information that's given to you. All right? if, it, if it doesn't fit in the formula, then it's probably not the right formula. Just one more. I wanted to uh, take you through at least one word problem. So I'll just do the one and then leave the others so that we can start off class with them. I mean, we're, we're learning this for a purpose. You know, there's there's nice applications of the law of sines and cosines in the real world. Um, it's not the kind of thing that you would necessarily think to do very often, but, you know, the world is not entirely made up of right angles. And right? so right triangle trig, basic Sokotoa is not always going to get the job done. So we look at instances where the, the, the largest angle in the triangle is not 90 degrees. It's something other than that. Right. So number one, a lamppost tilts towards the sun. This is my uh, leaning tower of Pisa uh, question. You know, a, a lamppost uh, tilts toward the sun at two degree, two degree angle from the vertical and casts a 25 foot shadow. Right? That's all marked up in the diagram. The angle from the tip of the shadow to the tip of the lamppost is 45, also marked in the diagram. And I, I found, you know, over the many years I've been doing this, with these kind of problems, when people struggle, they don't struggle with the math. They struggle pulling the triangle from the words that are, are given. All right. So that's why I give you the diagrams, at least to get started. We want the length of the lamppost to the nearest tenth of a foot. So now we have units involved. What they're asking us for is this length here. All right. We don't know what that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I'll put a question mark there. I'm going to take this triangle. or a rough facsimile of it, pull it out and label it up the way I've been labeling all the triangles. Start lower left, call that A, B, C. We know this is 45 degrees. Now this one indirectly is 92 degrees because they, they use this little boxy looking thing that represents 90 degrees plus the two that is being rotated gets us to 92 degrees. And while I'm here, 180 minus 92 minus 45 tells me the other angle is gonna be 43 degrees. I also know the base length is 25, that's side C. So I have choices here. I know all three angles. Anytime I know all three angles, law of sines is gonna be a good option. All right. If I know, like I said before, if I know two or more angles, law of sines is going to be the way. If I know one or more angle, I could go either way, law of sines or law of cosines. The preference would be law of law of cosines typically, but you know, in this case, we know we know all the angles, so law of sines would be the way to go. All right. And so I know. The most information about variable C, I know the sine of C and just C itself. So the sine of C is the sine of 43 degrees. And C itself is 25. They want us to figure out B. 
All right, based off of my labeling, that would be side B. I know angle B, that's my, well, not unknown. <laughs> uh, angle B is 45 degrees. Side B is my unknown. So I'm going to solve for B. B is going to be equal to 25 sine 45 degrees over 40 uh, over the sine of 43 degrees. All right, so 25 sine 45 divided by the sine of 43. And we're looking at about 25.9. Now it's the nearest tenth of a foot, so 25.9 feet. All right. And also just be mindful, you know, the units can change, but aside from that, the, the number that you get should not be unrealistic. So I'd ask myself, is it possible that I'd have a pole, like a lamppost or whatever, that's about 26 feet high? I, that doesn't seem absurd. If it was like 4,280 feet high, then I would say, okay, that's a pretty tall lamppost, probably not correct. If it's negative, I would say, well, it's absolutely not that. So I would dismiss that one. But if it's something in the realm of possibility, I mean, if I get like 50, 50 foot pole, I guess. I mean, it's possible. Is it likely? I don't, I don't know. I don't know enough about lampposts, but you know, it seems a little tall, but I'm not 100% sure, but I wouldn't eliminate that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't think I did the math wrong based off of that number. If I got a negative or something absurdly large, that's when I would start thinking I did something kooky. And the, the kooky thing that you would do, not you particularly, but one would do is accidentally have your calculator in the wrong mode. So if I had it in radian mode and I did this computation, it gives me, actually, numerically, it's not too far off. I mean, in terms of the absolute value, you'd be like, oh, I guess the negative is just there for show. No, it, it, it's it's there because you, you're you in the wrong mode. You're in radian mode when you should be in degree mode, All right? And it's very atypical to get an answer in degrees, whether it's positive or negative, that's even close to the answer in radian mode, All right? So, I mean, unless you're hovering around like zero, and you know you could be in in for a in for a surprise and um i don't do this to be a jerk i just do it and maybe you'll just think i'm a jerk but on on the test when i put a problem like this on there and i will i'm gonna put the radian answer as one of the choices right it, as if your calculator is in radian mode right so you really got to double check and be careful right the negative is the big the big thing that jumps out at you. In practical cases, if you see a negative number as an answer, you know, what's the height of this? How long did it take to get there? If you see a negative, then you you should be suspicious of your answer. All right. Can, Not always the you, case for sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Uh can you please like go over how do you put the calculator on radian mode? Oh yeah, sure. So you go to the home key. Now we want it to be in degree mode. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, so you're going to go all the way down to settings. So home, home key, all the way down to settings, angle measure, and then you have your three choices. We want degrees. Okay, and I just did it. Thank you so much. No problem. All right, so with that, I'm going to stop the recording.